All right, ladies and gentlemen, good evening to you all. I am Colonel Sumit Basu, representing the Education Not Club. We are indeed very thankful to each one of you to join this very encouraging and lively session taken by Dr. Sarda. And it is a session which is a very futuristic one, which we have organized from the Education Not Club. And this is part of a sequel. So this is the precursor to the another event which is going to come up on the 18th of August. So this is going to you know, lay the foundation of that subsequent talk also, and also demystify a lot many things which is coming up in the new education policy. In today's uh, webinar, we are fortunate, and I am again fortunate to host a wonderful personality, Dr. Sarda, and she will be talking to us and throwing light on competency-based curriculum. It is a huge topic of today, and the new education policy widely circulates around this kind of a understanding. Ladies and gentlemen, my honor to present to you again, Dr. Sharda Chandrasekharan. She is the academic director and head of institution of Whitefield Global School, Bangalore, and a very talented individual with more than 30, 40 years of experience and with 30, first, 30 years of experience as principal and director in various premier institutions all over the country. It's our honor that we have a personality of Dr. Sarada amongst us today. And she has been the principal of schools like DPS Vizac, Air Force School, Coimbatur, Venkate International Public School at Bangalore, Bharatiya Vidya Pet in Navi Mumbai, and as present is the academic director of Whitefield Global School, Bangalore. A very exuberant personality, as well as a personality with a lot of achievements and accolades with her. A few of the accolades which I feel that we should be taking on today and mentioning to each one of you about the speaker is that she has won the Outstanding Educator Gold Award for the Mumbai region and has been honored with the Indian Air Force Commandant's Commendation also at the Indian Air Force School at Vizac. And she has been part of an education domain where women were entrepreneurs were taken on by Goldman Sachs in an ISB Women Entrepreneurship Empowerment Program. She has been a recipient of Women of Substance Award from St. Mother Teresa Virtual University. She has got a very unique passion of things and in them achievements in terms of design and development of documented school quality management systems and school heads and implementation programs. She has been the CBSC resource person for Center of Excellence for Upholding Ethics and Integrated Social Studies. She has created and developed brands for school through word of mouth communication. It's a very fantastic phenomena, which she not only professes, but practices in a great manner. And I'm really honored to be associated with such a person who has been teaching hundreds of first generation learners, especially from the underprivileged sections also. She's not only proficient in the academic curriculum part of it, but also proficient in seven classical forms of dance and in Western dance forms like waltz and sol salsa. A personality of her nature and exuberance is indeed one with having qualification of MA, BA, MPhil and certificate an MBA also from the ISB and an honorary doctorate in ethical learning. Ladies and gentlemen, today, Dr. Sharda would be throwing light on a very important aspect of learning in the term of competency-based curriculum. So this is indeed a great session of ours and we are very fortunate that a person who's at the helm of affairs of Whitefield Global School will be talking to us on competency-based curriculum, which is quite a thing that is going to come up in the times to come. So ladies and gentlemen, there is a lot coming in the anvil with the new education policy having come in. And so we in education not will be continuously coming up with such kind of sessions every time to help you all in wherever that you all work upon and to build the synergies with you all together. Without much ado, the stage is open to Sardha ma'am for today's talk on enlightening us on competency-based curriculum. Over to you, Sardha ma'am. 
thank you very much. Uh, and uh, Sharda, without a story, doesn't happen. Meanwhile, I may, re may I request Seema to upload my uh, PPT if it happens. So uh, here is my very, very, very favorite story, which I would like to tell you all is that once upon a time, there was a king. And the king did not have any sons, no heir apparent. So he declared to the whole kingdom that whoever can pass in one particular uh, <clears throat> competition which he holds, they will become very, very, uh, they will become the heir apparent, uh, I mean, the king for the future of that particular kingdom. Then immediately, uh, <clears throat> many people thought that, yeah, yeah, we are ready to go. Then what happened? People waited, what is that particular computation? Then he said, the computation is very simple. They have to actually ride a chariot from one point to another. Then they thought the king has really become old. Then they all went. They all went to the place on a stipulated date. And what did they see there? They saw a huge, you know, huge... Maidan kind of it. So what happened? The people reached there and they saw uh, in a huge ground uh, in the center at the far end uh, the huge uh, stage was laid by uh, the king's people. The king was seated there and on to the right hand of the king uh, there was a huge shed where a lot of horses were there. On left hand also a lot of horses were there. In the center there was a huge chariot and the king announced that the competition is very simple. Whoever wants to become the next king should pick up one horse from right side, one horse from left side and move forward. That's all. Reach the palace. They thought really king has gone bonkers. King has no sense at all. Such an easy competition he's kept. Then <clears throat> Then came the actual uh, point. They say, he said, there is only one small hitch. The hitch is that the horses on to my right will move forward. They run forward. The horses on my left will move backwards. Now you have to take one horse from right and one horse from left, and you have to actually take the chariot forward. Then people thought that this is an impossible task. He doesn't want to give the kingdom to anybody. He generally made such an announcement. They all were very, very disappointed except one young man. So this young man came forward and he said that, I will do it. So the king said, okay. What did he do? He just took the horse from the right and he just tied it like this, forward running. The one which is in the backward running, he tied it backwards like this. Then he ran the chariot. What happens next is a secondary issue. But the question is here in the chat box is here that what did you learn from this story? Very short, precise into your chat box. I'm waiting for the answers into your chat box. What did you learn from the story? You all heard the story. I'm waiting. I'm looking into the chat box. Please post your answers into the chat box. What did you learn from the story? Your answers, please. I'm waiting for the answers because we have very short time and a lot of things to learn. Excellence. Excellence. Okay. Divergent thinking. Wow. Very good, Dr. Kamala Kannan. Very good. Think differently. Nalini Ravi. Very good. Sugna Devi. Confident. Very good. He was smart enough and thought out of box. Very good, Wali. And Malti said, think differently. Break the fixed mindset and promote growth mindset. Wow, very good, Malti. Now I'm waiting for a little more answers. So many. Where there is a will, there is a way. Wow, very good. Even uh, Kamlesh Dhamjia, Dhamija said that. Where there is a will, there is a way. Anything more you are thinking? Be moral and ethical. Okay. Understanding the situation is more effective than listening. Wow, very good. Confident, very good. Think differently, very good. How to manage the present situation, very good. Lateral thinking, very good. Nalini Ravi, think out of box. Javed Aslam, very good. And uh, waiting for a few more answers before I jump to the next one. The next, okay. So uh, what I feel is that the story talks about in any particular situation we will be surrounded by different thinking differently abled people you me as the heads of the institution or the teachers or the being the educators should know to take the right competency in everybody so that the learning happens 
all of us have positive and negative talents, positive and negative competencies, positive and negative thinking. But if we have to progress, we have to channelize them. How to use them for a progressive learning, progressive movement, progressive uh, forward movement. So all that is what this whole story is talking about. Whether you move backward, your friend or forward, the backward moving horse will move forward if you turn it the other way around. So any day how you can use that particular horse is in your hands. So you and me expected as this people that the leaders to make the chariot move. Okay, so now what I did is that that means I asked some hundred people that I asked really hundred people that you, 100 principles I asked across the country before I started this session, that what is that you as a principal feel, okay, that has changed. That means when you were a kid, you felt that there are some morals and values you were inculcated, but do you think have they changed now? I asked this question. Unfortunately, PPT is not coming. But when I asked the question, you know what people said? No. 66% of the people did not, said that it did not change. Whereas 17% of people said, yes, it changed. And 18% of people said it is changed. And uh, uh, some 18% so said maybe. Then, okay, we'll go to this so that I will be able to show them this. Yeah. So if this is the one by, when I asked, can I, can I go to the fourth slide, please? Fourth slide, yeah. So then I asked the second question to all of them. I asked the second question to all of them. Can I have the uh, fourth slide? No, fourth one. Can I have the fourth one? Otherwise, yeah, this is actually a different activity. This is not coming. Yeah, this is the one. So when I asked that, okay, this is for those people who said that there is a lot of change went on. That is the 17% of them. People said that, what is that you feel changed? They said that attitude and skill change and discipline change and empathy, compassion change. They are not helping others. They are not honest. They are, they are jealous. Their anger went up. Their leadership is a question mark, questionable one. Their morals and values changed. They said this many things. And somebody said respect and honesty also changed. Whereas 51% of them said it is not at all applicable to us because we feel that there is no change at all. Can we go to the next one, please? So when this went on, again, I did not stop. I asked another question. So if you are looking at children, whether you're in the 17% or you're in the remaining 60% or 18% and you are creating a curriculum, what will be your focus? Your focus, is it going to be building the right skills, attitudes or values and morals? And take my word, these 100 principles from rural and urban areas told me that 93% of them said that we want to imbibe attitude, skill, value, moral, everything through our curriculum. We do not want to separate them. So we can give a big round of applause for these 100 who represented you, me, and many millions of us across this country because we are not going to choose one aspect of it, but we are choosing the multiple aspects of it. Can we go to the next one, please? Then... What are the expected learning outcomes of this particular session? By the end of it, we should be able to understand what is the conceptual framework of competency approach. What are defining what is competency and behavioral indicators? And we may also get into developing competency models and applications of competency mapping. By the end of this one hour, we should be able to do this. This is my learning outcome okay for all of you so now we are going to this that i cannot get into activity much okay i can i get into activity can i would like to see the chat box here yeah now your chat box is open can you please tell me can you please post your answers what do you understand by curriculum please post your answers I'm waiting for your answers. What do you understand by curriculum? I'm waiting for the answers. Holistic development of a child, Sundari ma'am said, very good. Then, 
okay uh, just academics okay syllabus okay mane ka ma'am said it is syllabus mr girish said it is just academics okay i am waiting for others to speak i am waiting for others to speak framework okay then uh, all that comprises of learning syllabus child friendly curriculum with activity the method of teaching given uh, syllabus and content nalini ravi ma'am okay now i can understand that there is a lot of confusion between syllabus and curriculum thank you very much now i will go back to my uh, the the slide and then i will talk to you all i can see that quite a lot of you are actually confused between syllabus and curriculum C syllabus or uh, is what you are looking at uh, as the con the textual part of it which is prescribed by you or prescribed by you based on whatever is the national level curriculum formula came okay. again i'm going back to the curriculum so syllabus is a small part of it then what is curriculum now i have thrown open such a question left right center including national education policy talks about change in curriculum what is that curriculum we are talking about can we go to the next slide please next slide so what is that curriculum we are talking about we are talking about curriculum means the term curriculum has been derived from a latin <laughs> word called curare mama it's not changing I, okay, okay leave it one second ma'am i'll just stop and it's I'll okay just... don't stop me i'll go on it's it's mm -hmm. from a word called curare which means race course or a runway on which runs to reach a goal accordingly a curriculum is the instructional and educative program following which the pupils achieve their goals that means a path which is created by us as here is the schools the leaders the educational leaders who frame who form who create this road on which the child walks to reach his or her goals and ideals and aspirations of life so there was a time there was a traditional concept we have actually changed it few times and whenever we changed definitely people Uh, went to change it tried to change and not to change the questions came did not understand all those things came now we came into the con understanding of there is a traditional concept which talked about subject centered and the modern one which was talking about child and life centered so now when national education policy talks about new education policy talks about competency based they are also talking about something called life and child centered and it is not a traditional curriculum which is a subject centered we can go to the next next one please so we don't need to see this we can go to the next one what is that need of the day again humne 100 logon se pucha i asked 100 people these 100 people are corporates these 100 people are across the world and what they said is that we today what we are looking in children is that they need to have learning skills literacy skills and life skills whatever i am mentioning is in association with what has come into national education policy new educational policy today first of all we have to develop a child's critical thinking creativity collaboration communication then we also have to make the child ready with information media technology and how to use them now the question comes before i go to life skills critical thinking all of us are really left to right center we are thrown with the words and bloom's taxonomy is something like we use the way we use coffee tea in the house okay that bloom stacks on me is bloom doesn't know that though across the world especially in india every household is talking about bloom stacks on me and when we talk about bloom stacks on me we have to speak about critical thinking creativity especially if you are a teacher who is teaching a board going child the question always comes higher order thinking skill questions to be coming beta you do this beta you do that that is happening 
and creativity. When it comes to creativity, again, it is in Bloom's taxonomy, topmost. It is the topmost. So we are talking about it. Collaboration, communication. Why are they talking about this skills? Because even though the people from our country, our children, when they go out, they are extremely intelligent as far as knowledge is concerned. Unfortunately, they do. So people who are going and when they are going out, going out of their own house, their own schools, their own colleges, they are not able to communicate properly. They are not able to collaborate properly. They are not able to create properly. Don't we have no knowledge? We are known as knowledge banks. But when it comes to last, these most important three learning skills or all the four learning skills, we are still lacking behind. Now I'm coming to the literary literacy skills, which is about information, media, and technology management. We now today, we don't need a teacher who talks, gives knowledge. We need a teacher who makes the child understand how to manage the information which is there all around. One Google click, you get 25,000, um, I mean, uh, searches, answers. Well, how, which one is the right one? The child must be told and the child should know which one to go, how to put the filters. That is our role. Second thing, media. Today you switch on media, you get so much of an information, you do not know which is the right information. So deciphering the information and using it in the right way is the second and most important skill we need to put and technology. Technology is all over everywhere. Today also the technology was ready to fail and somehow it is supporting us now. But whether how to make the technology as a tool and a slave to us rather than becoming slave to this technology. This is the most important part of our 21st century skills, which are literacy skills they are called. But when we go to life skills, flexibility. Here I want to tell you all, ask you all something, a question because we have very little time. Otherwise, I would have told you three stories here. The, uh, uh, sorry, in the month of March, on precisely on March 23rd, how many of you know that you will be switching over to uh, e-learning mode? That you will be talking to a blank or some kind of black and white or colorful screen and you will be just talking. The same thing if it has been done a few months ago in the month of January, we would have laughed at them. What nonsense are they doing and what am I doing now? I don't see anybody except my screen and one blank screen, but I'm talking nonstop. Did we not change? This is a flexibility. We should be flexible. Why should we be flexible is that if you want to float, you have to be flexible. Now we should teach this to child. Be ready to change. Then be a leader. When you're talking about leader, it is not a leader of dictatorial. It is a leader of democratic. Accept everybody's views. Manage the views well. You be the, you walk your talk. You be the person whom you want others to be. So much of a leadership skill are required. And take the initiatives and be productive. Instead of saying that I'm doing so much of work, we, if we tell, if the child says, if the child says that I have done a very productive work so that my today's six hours can show this result, that is what we have to put into them. And above all social skills today, social distancing has come back. And we are, when I'm saying coming back, we have we had to work on social connect with the children and today again we are saying that stay at home we need to work seriously on this and if you put all these three today then that will be the competences so now what you do is whatever i'm doing you are going to do that so the curriculum that develops cognitive your hand on your head cognitive effective on your heart and psychomotor your hands so that the curriculum which develops cognitive, effective, psychomotor. 
that is your head heart and hand this is what is the competency based curriculum is all about how are you developing cognitive skills how are you developing effective skills how are you developing psychomotor skills you are developing knowledge you are developing attitude and you are developing skill these three are the things which you are developing in people in your children so that tomorrow they are ready to be a future leader of this country or future citizen of this entire entire world this is what we are looking at so that curriculum which develops these three domains is the domain which talks about competency based curriculums okay now can i go to the next one please next one so what will this do this how to develop this is there any one singular path yes the singular path is completely talking about competency based curriculum so what is competency when we ask this question the competency is if we look into competency it is an underlying characteristic of an individual an individual that results in effective and superior performance on the job or in any given situation go to the next one please yeah so competency means it is an underlying characteristic of an individual that results in effective and superior performance on job and a given situation this is what mr clemp said so is it how is it going to be you can go to the next one please so it is coachable observable measurable critical and critical to the success of individual performance so now the competencies can be coached it is observable we need to observe these competencies we need to actually measure these competencies and they are very critical to the success of an individual now when i'm talking about an individual the individual is not just in your classroom the individual who turns into an employee or employer in future the individual who becomes a citizen of this country and this world the individual who will be contributing to the society for that person we have to build in this kind of a competency okay then also i went ahead and looked into what does united nations go to the next one united nations industrial development organization talk about it is telling that if you actually develop it's a set of skill knowledge attributes that allow an individual successfully to perform a task or an activity within a specific function or a job it is called a competency they said darling cr i would like to tell you all a, uh, uh, an information on november 1st when there was a national wide national uh, conference of sahodaya and i was there and the chairperson of uh, uh, cbs even she declared that time it was anita ma'am when she declared the 2023 uh assessments of 12th and 10th will be based on competencies just i came back and i started working on this and in the month of january i was ready with the entire curriculum because when you are saying when somebody is saying it is only competencies are going to be assessed that means it is not just the knowledge of your child which is going to matter now how is the child going to convert that knowledge that skill that attribute add uh, knowledge into skill and attitude and how is he or she going to problem solve how is he or she going to develop all positive attitudes and contribute to the society and to himself or herself and to the society and to the world that is how it is going to be assessed how will they know it they will know it because when you are looking at an attitude or a skill or a knowledge by every answer we will be able to assess all that so then i also asked somebody like spencer and spencer they said that it is an underlying characteristics of please underlying characteristics of an individual and it is related to the criterion referenced and affecting or a superior performance ultimately a superior performance in their life in their classrooms and in their jobs that is what matters and that is what the competency is about can we go to the next one please 
So it includes what? This is the most important part. It includes knowledge, awareness, information, understanding of facts, rules, principles, concepts, theories, or processes. Knowledge may be concrete and measurable, or sometimes may also be abstract and difficult to assess. Knowledge is acquired through learning and experience. So that means not only having information, but how to use that. What is the processes and where uh, is it concrete? Is it measurable? If it is abstract, how am I going to use it? That is the knowledge. Knowledge is not giving them just a Pythagoras theorem, but knowledge is also to make them understand where to use the Pythagoras theorem, why to use the Pythagoras theorem, and how to use Pythagoras theorem. That is what knowledge is. And skill. Capacity to perform a mental or a physical task. Here, when you are teaching them a, a Pythagoras theorem, you are also telling them what, why, how, when you, who here, my good friend Malti is here, she, she knows about this poem that which talks about, uh, I have six honest serving men, they taught me all I knew, their names are what and why and when and how and where and who, I send them over land and sea, I send them east and west. The poem goes on like this. These are six honest men, sir. honest men are six of the questions the six questions which will enable us to gather the knowledge. So once we use the six questions and make them understand where to use, now assessing them whether they are able to use or not is developing their skill. Okay, then while doing this act of using skill, what kind of an attitude did the child develop? Even if they are making a wooden house, if the child says that I should not waste a wood, the child has got a very positive attitude. If the same house is made by two children, one child used the maximum wood, the same house, whereas the other child used the minimum wood, then the child who used minimum wood is very sensitive to the usage of all the resources around and he or she believes in conservation. Whereas the child who used maximum wood should be told that better, you should actually use lesser. So this is what the competency is talking about. This is what we have to put into our curriculum. This is what we need to teach them through our syllabus. So curriculum is not, curriculum is not syllabus. Syllabus is a small part of that, but multiple things we do through curriculum Syllabus is a part, but we should develop all these three competencies through that curriculum. Then it becomes a very competency-based curriculum. May I go to the next one, please? So what is it? Attitude tells them no why, purpose. If you look at this whole picture, it talks about building an ability in the child through commitment, purpose, and process. This is what we are looking at. May I go to the next one, please? So, attitudes. What is that attitude talks about? Attitude talks about feeling, behavior, and belief. Yes, ma'am. Then, what does the skill talk about? Skill talks about personality, factual, and professional. Knowledge is about awareness, familiarity, and understanding. And these are the competent co components of a competency. May we go to the next one, please? So how are we going to take care of this? There is a triangle of success which comes. The triangle of success talks is knowledge is only the base of the whole competency. So we need knowledge. Without knowledge, we cannot go further. It is the base. So the basic theories, information, facts, figures, descriptions, learning, everything is the base, but it is at the lowermost. What is adding to the triangle, to this pyramid is, look at that, attitude and skill are building that success. Knowledge alone doesn't make the success. What makes the success is 
adding skill and attitude then only it becomes a complete success story of triangle so this is the most important part of the curriculum building now how to go about it i'll tell you can we go to the next one i think every time okay so it is an interwoven it is a completely interwoven curriculum so how do we do that interwoven curriculum is first we will talk about how to develop attitudes in the class first of all if you are creating a curriculum you need to keep something in your mind why are you doing the curriculum what are all the components of curriculum uh, is that we are uh, why are we making a curriculum we are very happy with our school and our way of learning and new education policy came and now they are saying competencies competencies now do i need to change my syllabus or my curriculum darlings we need to change our curriculum and not our syllabus okay so when we are talking about changing in the changing of only the curriculum that means before you create a curriculum there are few things you need to keep in your mind so what is that you need to take uh, into consideration is that first of all when you are creating a curriculum you have got a guidelines from the government that this is what you are need to look into what is that you need to build co completely competencies now you understood what is competency competency is a mixture of knowledge skill attitude in fact there is a fourth component which i did not talk that is habit once we put all these things put together it becomes a habit that is what is called cash k a s h it is called but now it is only ask okay that is attitude skill and knowledge but later on it turns into a habit then it becomes cash okay now before we go that first of all we should keep in mind what fits me do not fit you what fits you do not fit somebody else because each one of us uh, have created our own schools or your our own uh, whatever curriculum plan based on our own vision and mission so any curriculum when you are making we have to keep in mind the vision and mission of the school the kind of stakeholders who are there all around us then the governing bodies norms which has already come fourth thing is that what is that we are going to think keep in mind then the fifth thing is that how are we going to have an assessment on this particular curriculum which we have designed uh, is it rigid or flexible is it too flexible or is it too rigid for all these things first we need to have a clarity that now we have got national education policy now the national education policy is very clearly talking that up to second standard it will be only a a primary or foundation one third to fifth will be primary sixth to eighth will be middle ninth to twelfth will become secondary or senior secondary they mentioned and here and they are saying that the whole curriculum will be developing their competencies and from sixth they are also going to take care of the different kinds of skill subjects okay and very interesting it is amazingly it has been told done now the question comes to us which skill are we going to take why is the first of all what i want all of you to know is that why are why are we why are we doing this competencies we are doing competencies only for one reason that is that we need to create a future citizen today morning we had a lovely 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 fantastic session in that session what was told by ms office head is that 30 years down the line what kind of jobs are there and in 30 years down the line whatever kind of jobs are there are we preparing our children for it that means the child who is in first standard 20 years i mean 15 years later is the child ready no darlings because they are whatever they are looking at the jobs which are coming augmented learning augmented technology to have a, a reach a create a path it's latin and greek to me and i am the school head if it is latin and greek to me it is latin and greek to quite a lot of people like me then if we have to prepare a future citizen we have to inculcate those attitudes and those skills in them number one when i am putting in that into curriculum that means my curriculum is not only the syllabus 
my curriculum is also my co-curricular activities, my extracurricular activities, my assessment patterns, and my teacher developmental projects and my teacher developmental plans and continuous reviews and uh, continuous uh, reactions and results and how are you we assessing this entire data which we have for a progressive development of the child today i have got reflection reviewed and i also have got the result of one particular assessment how am i assessing this particular data we have that also is part of this competency so when you are when the uh, the cbsc secretary mr uh, anurag tripathi ji when he told all of us project based learning kijiye he said that you do project based learning you give them experiential learning when he is talking about please make them do project based learning experiential learning what is that he is going to he is talking about is very simple if you ask a child that i am giving you 15 days time and using this particular theorem in mathematics and this particular content from science and this particular from social studies you are making one particular project of making a house or making a water resource uh, conservation whatever it is and i will be standing with you as a supporter that means i am a porter okay and i am helping this in pottery but it is the outcome is coming from the child i am only giving a guidance to the child and in that process the child tells what all things the child experienced what did the child experience at that particular point whether whether the pot came out well if it has come out well how did it come out well if it has not come what are the problems the child has all those comes in the shape in the name of reviews reflections through data collection then as a teacher what am i supposed to do read the data and decipher the data that where the child needs support is the pot not coming because of the wheel is the pot not coming because the child is pressing it too hard is it not coming because the child is making it too loose is it that the mud is too loose is it the mud is too hard all these things i will come to know only through the data once i know to decipher the data then i will give a remedial to the child either in skill that is how to hold that or in attitude that i have to keep all my things ready before i make a pot attitude or the knowledge of how to make the pot you understood so that is what called competency building in the cur curriculum that is what we need to work on so when we are doing if we are doing the only first how do we like develop attitudes in the children first thing you need to do is that when you go back to the school you class you have to make an inventory of the attitudes you want to develop then associate with the topics you have yeah how will i do it i'll explain to you after doing that you also have your own self assessment and you also have an assessment of child only to know whether the attitude has come or not how do you do that i'll tell you there is one example i can give you that attitude development how it happens okay the attitude development happens like this one example is that for example you are actually collect, connecting the electrical circuits okay when you are teaching them how to how an electrical circuit is working you are telling them you will take some wire some battery some switch some output device and you will connect all that yeah then your device is ready circuit is ready but what is that the child is learning without a wire can he or she make a circuit without a battery can he or she make a circuit without switch or output device can he or she make the device if these four are required they are complementing each other even in real life the whole family is like a circuit 
we are all required for this circuit in my work classroom me my four friends are one circuit we will be learning together in my whole school everybody is like a circuit we complement each other we learn from each other this is the attitude and i go to class i tell them that a circuit is made out of okay i tell them that a circuit is made out of and i'll tell them you need to have an output device you need to have wires you need to have a switchboard but if i tell them tomorrow we are going to make the circuit without telling them that i'm making a circuit tomorrow i will go to the class or i'll tell them you bring wires you bring out uh, that output device you bring switch you bring battery now four of you put together and connect it like this your device is ready then what did i teach them i not only developed this skill of developing one circuit i also developed the collaborative skills i also told the value associated with it and the knowledge of making a circuit the child learned in one single circuit making the competencies are developed yes or no if yes you please post it into the chat box so that i will be really thrilled to go ahead i'm waiting for the chat box the next example is even even more thrilling one that is you are teaching a trigonometry you are teaching trigonometry the sine of any acute angle is equal to the cosine of its complement you are teaching this that means sine is a complement in any life without one we cannot have other we need this so we are teaching already an attitude to them and what are we telling them the cosine of any acute angle is equal to the sine of its complement all the maths teachers are teaching this but we are not teaching that cosine sine are interdependent can you draw a cosine without a sine or vice versa you cannot in the same way the same type of relationship that exist between sine and cosine the tangent of angle a is reciprocal or flip over to the tangent of angle b yes ma'am understand how that is the similarities are there so when i am talking about trigonometry when i am talking about angle a tangent angle a tangent angle b i am saying that you are similar i am building in an attitude and when i use this in making any kind of a product then i am building a skill and when i am teaching while building that particular object i am also sharing with them the knowledge so how many things came together for this is what talks about competencies i think till here i have uh, i have told you exactly how the competencies happen in that how the attitudes can be built now i am going to go to the skills if we have to go for a skill how to build a skill when we go to that first of all we have to tell the children to have tolerance and resilience now when we are looking at a result recently one such case happened i want to tell you all this as a teachers and the school heads you must be receiving this kind of informations left right and center one particular child gets lesser marks or he will he or she did not get sufficient marks to clear the board examination i don't use a negative word here then what happens in such cases the parent comes and tells you you did not give enough of internal marks that's why my child failed and if you don't give now he or she will go and actually commit suicide these are the words which are used left right and center then as an institutional head as a mathematics or whatever subject teacher we get flustered what i want to tell everybody here is if really we follow what is being meant in the national education policy and competency based learning the first thing we are teaching the child is that how to be resilient how to accept a failure i tell everybody it doesn't matter once you fall down you learn from falling and you will avoid falling next time what happens in our entire day to day life from the time we are born and one from the time the baby starts walking the baby actually slips and falls and as a mother we tell that 
hi yo yo you got hurt so sad i will hit the floor so what did we do we shifted the blame to the floor instead of telling the child that it is your you did not walk properly beta that's why you have fallen down it doesn't matter next time we will be definitely you will be able to walk better if a parent tells this the child will not shift the blame to the floor but the child learns that i the child to walk better this is one thing we need to put that is what is attitude and skill about second thing is the child also understand that there is something called tolerance and resilience now tolerance itself is a very negative word can we go to the next uh, slide please this is not the one which i am talking about next one next one next one next next yeah so now please go back yes so when i am talking about tolerance the word tolerance is a negative word because who are we to tolerate anybody we should say acceptance when we are talking about acceptance first we need to tell the child to control his or her emotions i am talking about skill development here apart from that skill which is a physical skill where the child learns for outside world there is a 21st century skill development starts only with this that is the child having a control over self so what is that happens is first we tell the child accept the world as it is you are part of it it doesn't matter once you fall down you will get up and nobody is going to judge you based on what you have why it has happened they will only look at anything which is doing good or bad only for a day so do not take it to your heart but you are answerable to your own conscience and your conscience should tell you and guide you and lead you so accept the situation number 1 accept your entire neighborhood number 2 accept your entire classroom your friends your teacher your school your society accept the entire conditions and you want to make a change you make a change by being the change you want them to do then even if you can bring change in two people you have succeeded for all these things you need to have a self control number 1 what happens the moment you become self controlled person you the child will start coping up with the stress coping up with all sorts of whatever bullying we talk about all those people who are of my age and around my age in the audience they know that how we are all brought up in our childhood i tell you even today if somebody tells me you are fat i don't take it negatively i tell them that i have lot of cushion i will never have broken uh, bones at all like the other ones who may have a papad kind of uh, falling and uh, i mean uh, bones breaking i have lot of things to actually cushion to take care of my bones my feet are carrying me well teach the child to accept teach the child to cope up with everything then teach the child to be competent enough to be there in the world that means i don't want someone to tell me to get up in the morning i don't want someone to give me a cup of milk or a coffee or a tea which i require i will go and make it for myself i will get up by myself i will become a responsible learner that is a 21st century skill also that will bring in the confidence the moment the child become confident the child will start getting connected to people the moment the child gets connected to people the character bringing building automatically happens the day the character building happens the child will start contributing to the whole society and the world so this is how we need to develop the skill in the child this is i'm talking about 21st century skill already i finished talking about how to use the knowledge for building skill here how to build a 21st century skill make the child have a controlled controlled behavior that is what makes the child to cope up his feelings cope up with his society cope up with all the situations which makes him competent when he becomes competent he gets confidence when he i'm using he only as a generic form he or she here i'm not at all uh, gender biased please okay then uh the moment the child becomes confident 
he or she gets connected to people when he or she gets connected to people the character building happens and they will become the contributors to the society and the world and we have created a fantastic 21st century child with this kind of a curriculum we build so how are we going to make a child a controlled child is what we need to put it into our own curriculum in through our co curricular activities through our extra curricular activities through our uh, whatever is the contextual and textual knowledge we are giving all these things the kind of path we are drawing so that the child can walk to become a controlled person to become all this thing is our competency based curriculum can we go to the next one so your learning models modules must have open discussions and experiences why am i talking about open discussions and experiences is that when we are discussing we learn through discussions when we are talking we learn also to accept others points of view we will not become sorry to use this word like one particular uh, uh, person from our channel who doesn't listen to anyone he calls 20 people but he will only keep shouting instead of that we will make the child not only a good listener but also a contributor take them to field trips when i'm talking about field trips very appropriate field trips and that field trips will make the child experience different kind of learning have debating sessions visits to workplaces and q and a's with the different vocational experts here i would like to tell you one uh, uh, one experience which i had in uh, Uh, one child talking to me in finland uh, first thing is that uh, when i talk about finland i don't want to sound very um, snobbish and every every trainer would like to talk about finland it is not for that this child the, he said that his experience with a barber okay hair cutting barber so what happened this child went to that barber f barber for the uh, okay as a vocational expert visit him. then he came and he wrote a complete thesis on this what did he write he said do you know the kind of mathematics involved in hair cutting how many inches of hair to be left at each layer to create one kind of a hair cut for each hair cut the measurements differ and there is a skill the size of the scissors the kind of apparatus you use without hurting the person who is getting the hair cut done there is so much of mathematics there is so much of a science in it and he wrote completely some 20 30 pages of uh, his uh, thesis on it isn't it amazing did we ever know about it so when i talk about vocational experts i always say that a, a cobbler is equally contributive like a surgeon when you are undergoing a surgery the surgeon puts exactly three stitches so that that wound will be absolutely healed you go with a broken uh, footwear to a cobbler exactly three stitches nowadays that has been that's gone that getting the uh, mending the shoes have gone now but in our generation we used to go so what happens is when you go to these vocational experts whether the person is a surgeon the child is going to learn multiple things but if you go to a potter if you go to a uh, hair cutter if you go to any plumber electrician they all contribute and that's what makes a child learn different skills and that is very 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 important to building the skill of both knowledge based as well as the 21st century skills in the children can we go to the next one please okay so what is the next one how do we make them to know the accuracy of information to how to make an evaluation make the child understand to analyze the uh, information to know the accuracy of information incorporate research based tasks and projects now here when i am talking about research based tasks tasks and projects today blink of your eye you have got google math are giving you so many so much of knowledge 
you should tell them to decipher each research based papers that's a skill how to decipher these research papers how to read them then how to make their own presentations how to give respect to the people from their for the the original author of that writer plagiarism is at maximum now but now the moment we submit any of the thesis first they will put into that particular uh, app and they will we will know how much of percentage of this particular uh, thesis is plagiarized lifted from google so we should teach the child to respect that author and give that respect to them saying that as per so and so this is what quote and and quote so this and second thing now there are multiple people who are giving multiple informations i just heard from somebody recently that many of these um, vaccines also when it is given to a child below 5 years the child may turn into adhd ada all those things there somebody was talking to me now i do not know i have no no knowledge of this but if i have to know i should understand first of all to check the accuracy of the information rather than getting carried away by the information which i have heard this also we need to put into the children and this happens only if we tell them to analyze these research based tasks and projects that will enable them to actually understand how to evaluate and how to analyze and how to know the accuracy of the information can we go to the next one please so knowledge development so when we are talking about knowledge normally there are five stages of knowledge we create knowledge we store the knowledge we disseminate knowledge we use evaluate the knowledge okay and this is the easiest part of our entire competency based curriculum because we are not creating knowledge somebody else is giving us a textbook here and that is what we are taking it as a knowledge one but when if i am you or if you are me what we need to do is use the textbook which has come to us as a tool only take this but and take the multiple resources we have all around us and create one knowledge once we created the knowledge we need to store it well for the next few years to come adding and deleting wherever it is necessary then disseminate it that is whenever required and use the knowledge in the right way wherever and then evaluate the knowledge is it right because even this knowledge is sometimes becomes old outdated then we should go for the new one which has come all those people who used to slate now they don't use a slate yeah so there are four objectives to focus first is to create knowledge repositories then to enhance the knowledge environment to manage the knowledge as an asset and to improve the knowledge access see this is a very technical one which i am talking because this is otherwise we are doing it in the schools so do not get carried away by uh, sometimes we love to use heavy 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 uh, words and so that we feel thrilled about it but this is what we are doing only thing what we are not doing at this moment is that we are taking only the textbook and not using the knowledge all around us which we need to do then only we can keep this repositories then we can enhance our knowledge environment that is our classroom then we will not manage the knowledge as an asset today if i have a diamond set i keep it in the locker then my knowledge is also my asset but my knowledge doubles by sharing but i will keep my knowledge safely with me i will not lose my knowledge but i keep gathering more and more diamond sets of this knowledge okay then we will improve the knowledge access that means the more the knowledge is accessed the more the child gets the more the teacher accesses the more the teacher benefits through the teacher the child benefits the society benefits so this is what as the school heads as or as the educators we need to do these are the objectives so process is simple acquire the knowledge create the knowledge reuse the knowledge share the knowledge very important because by sharing our knowledge always doubles up so process is define it structure it 
and retain it. The main goal is very simple to improve an organization's efficiency and save the knowledge within the learner. This is our goal of the entire knowledge management. I have finished with attitude. I have finished with skill. Now I'm with knowledge management. Can I go to the next one, please? So how do we do this? This is the, this is the challenge. Normally, if you want to have a competency-based curriculum, your entire curriculum should be based on the case studies. The case study is not a comprehension. Case study is we give a case and we give them relevant questions which are not there in the case study, but the child will use a case study as a referral point. And in this, we should have one question based on skill, one question based on attitude, and one question based on knowledge minimum then we will be able to assess the child. Now, for example, I do not want you to uh, uh, answer for the first two, which are absolutely uh, generically, it is a knowledge. Whereas I want you to answer the third question. I'm waiting for your answers, please. Please put your answers. Yeah, strictly follow the protocol and stop the spread of infection. Very good, Shakuntala ma'am. Yeah, but as a prime minister, Make my citizen self-disciplined and take all precautions. Yeah, very good to go for work. Very good, sir. Very good, Dr. Kamala Kanan. Very good. Difficult question, but ensure physical distancing. Okay. No, as a prime minister, as a prime minister. One more answer, I will go. This question is completely to assess one particular person's skill and attitude. Because as a child, if the child says, uh, it's okay that uh, we have 150 crore people. So if one crore population dies, it doesn't matter. That means we need to work on his attitude. And if the child talks about, I will create within one year that such a technology that even if people are at home before the vaccine comes, they should be able to manufacture sitting at home. Then the child's skill and attitude are working better. So this third question, based on the third question only, the teacher needs to work on what to develop on the child. That is how our case study way of learning supports the competency-based learning. Actually, this is completely one whole eight hour uh, job, which I tried to finish in one hour. Can we go to the next one, please? Wonderful. Yeah, so now, Problem solving, you have to start with lesson planning and you have to have problem solving as the main learning outcome of your lesson planning. Next one, please. Then four pieces of program uh, of your, uh, um, uh, this thing is curriculum plan is plan purposefully, prepare diligently. CP stands for curriculum plan. Prepare diligently, proceed positively and per use persistently. These four are the four P's of your curriculum plan. Can we go to the next one? So designing is your school's vision and mission are the main important aspects. Then you will put your school components and stakeholders in mind. Then you have to put your demographical requirements and the board affiliated and your leadership. Then you will put it into your curriculum. And once you do this, then you will in incorporate competency building into this. Then your curriculum is ready. Can we go to the next one? So principles are you, you should have a balanced curriculum plan. It should be articulative. It should be sequenced. It should have integration and it should have continuity. Without continuity, you can never have your curriculum plan at all. Can we go to the next one? When you put the strategies and written curriculum, instructional strategy, curriculum, co-curriculum, uh, curricular activities, extracurricular activities, and create your plan, your competency-based learning has come. Okay, so can we go to the next one? So your syllabi plan will be like this, that you will divide the chapters into concepts, concepts into micro learning points. Every place at micro learning point, you will add what curriculum, what attitude, what skill and what knowledge you are developing. And this is your, you can take a photograph of this. This is what you will be putting into your lesson planning. So you, you can leave it for a minute and you can go to the next one. Yeah, so path to ask is vision and mission, your stakeholder requirement, your demography, your syllabi adapted, your incorporation of 
attitude, skill and knowledge in it, creation of curriculum plan, training the stakeholders, creating your lesson plans and a deliverance. If you do all this, you are ready with your competency-based learning. Can we go to the next one? Any questions, please? Um, yes, the audience, may I request you all to please quest, put your questions in the chat box. It has been a fantastic session, superbly energetic, I must say, ma'am. And we are terribly sorry that the internet and the tools of uh, technology has not been with our side just like Murphy's Law, as it happens. So can I request the audience to kindly give questions in the chat if anybody has got any questions to be asked to the speaker? We need a chat, please. Uh, one question here is, what are the measures of good education, sir? That has, has that got to do with uh, competencies? Measures of good education is... It's like it, what you call good education is a completely a utopian theory because what suits one doesn't suit other. But if you put in competencies in every child, it suits everybody. That is what I call it as a uh, good education. Next one. How schools and education boards are planning for both parent teachers education first. Um, this is a million dollar question which is put in because Teachers' education, teachers' competencies uh, building, teachers' capacity building is in the hands of schools. And the schools need to make their curriculum plan ready. Then the boards must support in getting the teachers trained because teachers are the front-end warriors for this. They are the ones. And all this can be done. But training the parents, making them understand is that, yeah, because... If I am a parent, for example, if I'm a 35-year-old parent, I'm not 35-year-old, I'm 58-year-old grandparent, leave me aside, that if I am a 35-year-old 30, grandparent, then whenever education is coming or school is coming, I'm referring to my school, which is not applicable now. That we need to put in and it, again, it is in the hands of the schools that how you are making your parent orientations happen. Once you do that, then it doesn't happen overnight. It will not happen overnight. It's a long process. But mm -hmm. again, we need to accept that one or two places, if we falter, it doesn't matter. But we will not give up. Giving up is losing. We will not be losers. Slightly Wonderful. out of topic, but do competency... Uh, Ha, it's out uh, of Mr. context, I would also say, but yeah. then you can take it if you want it, ma'am. Uh, sir, actually, I tell you, this is out of context because I'm not uh, talking to husbands and wives here, but yeah, I'm creating future husbands and wives. So uh, that attitude in the child with the right skill and knowledge, and if I put them in the right values, in accepting other with all the flaws. Yeah, and exactly if I tell the, uh, the children the children that marriage is not joining two halves, but marriage is joining two fulls, then there will be no such problems. Thank you very much, sir. Next question. Uh, oh, wonderful, ma'am. That is a great, great answer, I would say. <laughs> Any more questions, sir? So many borders. <laughs> Uh, there is one uh, which Annapurna ma'am has our competencies are built and groomed with every session. And thank you for the intellectual exchange. That's been a very wonderful. Oh, thank you, Annapurna. Thanks a lot. Uh, there is one more question which has come. Are we really ready to adapt a competency based curriculum, taking into account the attitude of today's generation of teachers and parents? Wow. Already is... we have adapted in our school. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, and we are doing it. Uh, I, I proudly say with my nose shooting into the air that January I was ready. And just converted that into online. That's all. We are doing Wonderful, it. Yeah. Super. Super. Thank you so much, ma'am. I just want to sum up because we are running short of time. It's been a wonderful session. And we have covered a lot of mileage out of this session because it's been a very, very interactive, I would say, as well as very informative. So if I may be allowed to sum up very quickly on behalf of Education Not, I would like to sum up that we started the session of this competency-based curriculum topic with uh, you know, the uh, defining of the objective of this entire session. That was a very well thought out and a very well put uh, thing where we want to talk about the conceptual framework 
the definitions, how to develop it, and what are the applications to it. Superbly, it graduated to something called the curriculum. What do you mean by curriculum? The definition of a path to achieve our goal. And then we graduated to the 21st century skills, wherein the four C's were talked in greater details. The C of creativity, critical thinking, collaboration, and communication. That leads us to the literary skill in which info management, along with media and technology, as to how they could be governed, leading to the most important aspect of life skills, which is what the nature of the demand is today, in terms of flexibility, in terms of leadership, in terms of invitation and productivity, leading to a social attitude of a person. So how do we develop the curriculum is what was the next thing that came in, in a cognitive, effective, and psychomotor manner. That leads to the area of competency and the definition of competency in terms of being it coachable, observable, measurable, critical to success in individual to perform. And that led to the triangle of definition of competency, which included knowledge, skills, and attitude. And this competency would finally create ability amongst the children. And this ability can only be formed if it can be brought good habit, a good nature of a person. It is called, and then the definition of curriculum, wherein we are talking about academic, co-curricular, as well as continuous assessments happening, in which how the transition will happen to a project-based or an experiential learning, where the competency build up would again go around the skill, the knowledge, and the attitude of the child. Brilliant examples were given, ma'am, in terms of electronic circuit and in terms of trigonometry relating to real life examples and to real life leadership principles in terms of tolerance and resilience. The most important aspect being talked today is that failures and as to how a child should cope up with the failures and not only the child, but how the environment, the school, as well as the parents should cope up with the failures and create a responsible learners such that they are able to connect to people leading to importance of learning modules, which was what some of the people had the key doubts and questions in, in the initial sessions that when we started. And these learning modules should include discussions and experiences, field trips, debating sessions, and interaction with vocational experts. It is a wonderful concept that has been talked about. And research-based tasks and projects is what everybody in the school is now should be going towards because that is the future of today. Because today, the question that the stakeholder, that the parents are going to ask is 30 years hence, is my child going to be job ready or not? So that is a big question which is going to come up. And because of that, the competency that has to be built in every child, which is different in the way in which every child paces themselves, had been elaborately explained by Dr. Sardar. Very indeed grateful to you, ma'am. It has been a very, very enlightening session. And each one of us in this are deeply thankful to you for your insights into this topic, which is a precursor to our next event, which is coming up on the 18th of August, in which we have uh, the uh, Education Secretary erstwhile, Mr. Anil, talking to us on the new education policy. So all of you, please do rope in to the next session of ours, which is also going to be a very, very lively and interactive session. He is another wonderful speaker, and we would also be talking to you all about the new education policy and what with each one of you. So whether you're a teacher, you're a principal, you're an owner of a school, how you would benefit out of it. Please visit us as www.education.com and also see us in Facebook and visit us in LinkedIn. We in Education Not Club wish to bring forth to you all the things that are required for an institution to run in a professional and the best manner. I thank each one of you participants today who have been very, very vocal in their participation of whatever has been asked by Ma'am in terms of answering questions. It was a beautiful tour. Each one of you would be taking back to your home a lot of learning from this particular session. We in education not take great pride in bringing personalities of Sardar Ma'am's stature to our platform who can share with each one of you the most brilliant aspects of education and how it is unfolding itself in the years to come. 
thank you one and all ladies and gentlemen and it's been an honor to present to you dr sharda in today's enlightening topic of competency based curriculum and ma'am i assure you the accolades the thanks and the all the kudos are continuously pouring in the message box which you must also be seeing and we in education not feel very proud that when our participants enjoy this kind of a session in which they are continuously egging us on to give us such wonderful sessions one after the other